All right, good morning. Very excited about being here today. I uh, want to use my time wisely. So I'm going to be talking on today, resolving conflict to win. Resolving conflict to win. I want to open up with a passage from the best-selling book of all times. <laughs> Somebody says yes. Best-selling book of all time um, that helped shape me, make me, and mold me into the man that I am. Just want to read a passage real quick from Luke 5 in verse 2, and it says, And Jesus saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen was gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. What were they doing? Washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon. We know him as Peter. And prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the deep, out of the ship, now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will take down the net and I will. And when they had done this, they caught a great multitude of fish and their net broke. And they beckoned unto their partners which were with them in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they filled both ships so that it began to sink. Now, who in this room by the show hands would love to have the problem that Peter is having, Simon is having? You've been toiling, you've been fishing, you've been trying to catch some customers, and you meet one man, and this man says, well, go back out there. You'd be like, oh, well, I, no, I've been out there. It don't seem like nothing out there. But through one relationship, you go back out there and you catch all of this fish at one time to when your net break. Who would like to have that problem? Yeah, everybody in here would be like, yeah, yeah I'd like to have that problem. Okay, I'm going to read that passage. And then I'm going to give you a, a, a passage at the end of our discussion. My opening statement, I want you to understand now that Winning is not by chance. Winning is not by chance. Too many people have brought into the deception that I'm going to win with no preparation. It's like a gambling, you know, and I'm, I, I, I don't have to prepare. Preparation is to prepare you for the obstacle seen and unseen. That is what preparation is for. It's to prepare you for the obstacle seen and un, um, unseen. So to win, you have to learn how to resolve conflict. You have to learn how to mend relationships. It's so easy just to walk away. You know, I don't want to deal with that. So we have so many broken relationships throughout our lives. But we've got to learn how to resolve conflict and mend relationships. Offenses will come. Conflicts will arise. Are y'all hearing me? And how you handle them will determine if you're ready for the next level. I'm, I'm going to give you an example. Shout, first shout, I'm a problem solver. I'm a problem solver. Shout it like you mean it. All right, all right. When is the best time to solve a problem? The best time to solve a problem is before there is a problem. We've got to learn conflict prevention. What is it that I can do? to prevent conflict, because conflict is going to come. But what is it that I can do to prevent conflict? What is it that I can learn? One thing that we can learn is how to communicate and how to get understanding. We can study temperaments, how people, um, there are different things that we can learn as a skill. Are y'all with me? To prevent conflict. Um, let me give you an example, how easy conflict can happen. Uh, let's see here. I'm, I'm an employer, and I'm going to hire two employees, okay? Just to give you an example. Uh, let me volunteer. Uh, Arlen, yeah. stand up. <laughs> and uh, let me see here. Uh, well, Callie, she's, she's doing live for me. H hold that for me. Uh, Callie, stand up. She's going to be a volunteer. She's going to be one of my employees. Now, everybody else in here is going to be a potential customer for my business, okay? Now I want my employees to come and stand by me. I want you to go this way, Arlen. I want Callie to go this way. Come on, hurry up, hurry, hurry, hurry. I'm on a time schedule. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Now, you know what, Callie? You got poor customer service. I told you that all of this, all of these people were potential customers, and you stepped over them. You didn't say, excuse me. You didn't say, pardon me. It, you know what, Arlen? You sure don't follow directions good. I told you to come and stand by me, and you stand, I want you to stand right here. You standing right there. Now, instantly, automatically, offense and conflict is going to arise. And it's not really based on what they have done. It's based on broken communication and unexpected expectations. If you're going to be the leader to solve conflict or to prevent conflict, you have to give clear direction. I placed that expectation on her as if she knew that I wanted her to say, excuse me, to say, pardon me. Are, are y'all with me? We, we make that assumption that everybody's going to do this. We hire people. Everybody's going to do it the way. They're not mind readers. So you have to deliberately take the time, say, this is how we do it. Each person that you come to, I want you to come, stand up, go to the left, and when you come to each person that's going to be a customer, say, excuse me, pardon me, tell them about, um, give, us, give them one of our cards. They're, they're, they're our potential partners. Or, and I have to tell Arlen, when I, I want you to come from the right. When you come from the right, I want you to stand in front of me. Clear, thank y'all. You, you. <laughs> Clear direction. A lot of conflict happen because we're not clear in telling people what we want. That's in relationship. That's in marriages. That's in some of everything of our day-to-day -day life. We're not clear in what telling people what exactly it is you want and what you want them to do. Okay. So... Here's one of the issues is, I don't know how to talk to them, first of all. And I did not give clear directions, okay? So, know what you want and communicate clearly. There are three major areas in our lives where we must learn how to resolve conflict. Number one, conflict with others. We've got to learn how to resolve conflict with others. This happens first in the form of criticism. Oh, we all know that. Criticism. You become first critical of that person. You know, um, why you do it like that? That doesn't make sense. Only a fool will do it that way. <laughs> I don't understand that. We criticize one another, the way they talk, the way they look, the color of their skin. We criticize them. And once criticism has set in, Communication is broken ever before it even starts. Because now it doesn't matter whether I'm speaking truth. It doesn't matter whether I'm giving out goal. You have already criticized and caused the wall of communication to block anything that I'm saying. Oh, he, he's, he's just a young black boy. What does he know? Criticism. It happens. Oh, she's a woman. What can she teach me? Criticism. It blocks communication and your efforts of winning. Are y'all with me? Yes. Okay. Let, let, let me give you an example of uh, criticism. Um, I like Mr. Fox right here. And if I come to Mr. Fox and I say, man, you old. We don't do it that way no more. <laughs> No, I'm serious, because this generation really need to learn how to respect elders again. And a lot of them talk like this. No, no, listen, listen, listen. We don't do it like that. What can he teach me? Right? Now, really, we criticize what we don't understand. We criticize because they might do it a different way. And some of us criticize to justify our negative attitudes and thoughts towards other people. So, you know, you, on, you, you driving down the street, somebody cut you off. And the first thing you say, that jerk just cut me off. How about instead of criticizing, you inquire. Instead of first thing you do, instead of criticizing, you pull up and says, was there a reason why you cut me off? And that person might say, oh, yeah, I just dropped some coffee in my lap. I'm sorry. 
Does that make a difference? Make a huge difference. But if you want to see criticism at its best form, turn on debate, on the debate. <laughs> You'll see criticism. So watch this now. So if I know this and I'm approaching Mr. Fox, there's a better way of me approaching it. And I could come to him and I said, I could say, um, seeing that you're older than I am, okay, stop. Now, de depending on how he feel about his age, it could come off as an offense, especially to women, right? So all you have to do is take the emphasis off of them, put the emphasis on you. Here's a better way. Seeing that I'm younger than you, I was wondering if there are some things that you can show me. Here's an excellent way. Remove all criticism and praise him. I come to him. Mr. Fox, seeing that you're full of wisdom and experience, I was wondering if you could give me your expertise on a matter. This, yeah. <laughs> this man will open up and be willing to teach me all that he has. He's been in software for, since 1970. That's longer than I've been alive. I'm 36 years old. And you don't think that is something that he can teach me? Are y'all with me? Yes. But if I'm critical, I will never get to that point to getting what he has to offer. Now, if you don't fix this stage of criticism, the next stage moves into condemnation. This is the next stage. Condemnation um, is a stage to where um, you now just condemn them. How many people in this room have ever told a lie? Don't lie. <laughs> How would you like it if I said you're a liar? You wouldn't like it at all, would you? Because that one action or that one deed that you may have done in your past or even yesterday does not make you a liar. But what we would do, we would quickly label that individual and condemn them instead of saying something like, well, what you're saying is I don't believe to be true. There's a difference in addressing the action and addressing the person. We can't condemn one another. And the only way that you can fix that relationship is you got to do a self-check and go to that person and ask for forgiveness. Stop condemning. Are y'all with me? Yeah. All right. Um, if we condemn one another, guess what? You would never get the benefit of what that individual carry. Notice in relationship, the last part of that word is ship, it's cargo. It's the benefit of what that individual carries. If you don't respect and honor what that individual carry or respect them, you'll never get the benefit of what they have to offer because you've already condemned them. Are y'all with me? Yeah. All right. Here's the second place. You got to resolve conflict. You have to resolve conflict with others, and then you have to resolve conflict in your house. Conflict in your house. A house divided cannot stand. A house divided cannot stand. Some people are trying to win, but neglect family, neglect kids, neglect marriages, and think they're going to win. Well, you know, this is what's holding me back. Have you ever wondered that you got what you got because you got what you got? Like the doors that open for you is because you got what you got? Mm, that's something to think about. Uh, or you could get what you want and lose what you had. You can win over here and lose over here. It's called harmonious agreement. There is power in unity. If you want that big break, if you want to win, 
You've got to resolve conflict in your house. Uh, number three, and I'm moving quickly now because my time is running out. You've got to resolve conflict in yourself. This is huge. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. I'm not double-minded. Yo, yeah, well, I want to be great. I want to win, but you see yourself insignificant. Have you ever wondered the significance of you feeling insignificant is actually significant? <laughs> that your confession of yourself is a conflict within yourself? You cannot be the victim and victorious at the same time. You cannot walk in self-pity and win at the same time. You have to resolve conflict within yourself. Some of you need to forgive yourself from past mistakes because your past is conflicting with your future. You need to forgive it. Okay. So, you know, we all waiting on the big break. But a lot of us, um, I was guilty at one time, had conflict in ourselves. We, when is this big break going to come? I, I, I know that it's coming. You can feel it. And many of you, if not all of you, are destined for greatness. It's all over you. You have a God has put a mechanism in you that has geared where you're able to press on where others have not been able to. It's in you. But if you don't resolve conflict, conflict is like this. Well, I'm in this relationship and I'm waiting on God to bless me. I'm waiting on um, this big deal to come. And soon when I make all of this money, first thing you want to do is get a divorce. That's conflict. Oh, y'all don't want to talk about this. What does this have to do with business? It has everything to do with business. So, again, I asked a question at the beginning. How many would like to have the issue that Peter had with the net breaking? By show of hands. Okay. I'm going to read you another passage, as in my closing and give you a little bit more information of what was going on, okay? That was Simon Peter and Andrew, his brother. That was John and James that came to help them when they net broke. Listen to the Gospel of Matthew 4. It's the same thing, but a little bit more information. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers. Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting their net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishermen of men. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. Here's some valuable information right here. The valuable information, have you ever wondered the reason why Peter was not catching any fish? Because his net was not mended. He had holes in his net. Have you ever wondered why he felt the way he felt when his big break came and his net broke? We say we want that, but the truth of the matter is the fish was only saved because two men came to help them that knew how to mend nets. These men spent their time while Peter is out here fishing. Oh, I'm going fishing. I'm going to go catch something. These two men, the Bible mentioned, that they was with their father. And their father, someone that had experience, was teaching them how to mend their nets. Because the great catch is coming. And if you don't do the due diligence to learn how to resolve conflict, if you don't do the due diligence to learn how to mend your net, your net will break. And that's not the situation you want to be in. Because if your business blow up and you lose all of your customers, just thank God that he had somebody that was there to able to come and help him. 
Do you have that person? People ask me all the time, well, Pastor Calvin, um, why are you sit, spend so much time on foundational things? Why are you, you know, discipleship and different things of that nature? Order. Because those are foundational things. The most time has got to be spent in the foundation, learning how to mend your net. These boys that had been taught by their father came and helped Peter, who was about to lose his big break, catch all the fish because they had a net that wouldn't break. 